Hey guys, welcome to Jace Outdoors. I am Jace, and I just thought that I would share with you uh, my decoy setup on a typical situation. Uh, you know, it is going to vary depending on the situation, um, but the bulk of the times, if I'm going into a new area, I'm hunting a different turkey, this is my setup. And you have to understand that this is a little different when it's filming. Uh, you know, hunting a turkey is one thing, but filming a turkey hunt is just a whole other thing. And we typically are shooting our turkeys, you know, less than 10 yards. Yeah, it's a little on the extreme side because it does uh, open up a, a bunch of different uh, issues with that. Um, it actually is a little harder to hit them when they're that close because your pattern hasn't opened up yet. But uh, we're typically, you know, right on top of them. It just makes for some awesome footage. And... Me personally, I just think the excitement of having them that close, it just never gets old for me. If you're the type that, you know, puts in the TSS and you're going to launch at 75 yards to kill that turkey, have at it. I mean, honestly, this is just, uh, you know, my setup. This is the way I like to do it, and I think that the setup does matter. And here's why. How many times have you set your decoys out 20, 25 yards away and those turkeys come in, they see the decoys and they hang up at like 70, 80 yards out? I've been there many of times and I, I've learned to bring the decoys in closer to you. So now if they're hanging up, they're only about 50, 60 yards out. And with you know today's ammo, that's pretty well in range. So there are a few variables with this, of course, uh, you know, calling when to call, when not to call, uh, the sounds that you make, and your setup as far as where you're setting. So, you know, I would probably tuck away in a, in a pine tree like that. You have to be hidden or you have to blend in. So this is basically what I do. I, I always set out a Jake decoy, and this thing has just gotten the snot beat out of them over the years. I mean, this, this guy uh, really has taken a beating. And nine times out of 10, those gobblers, when they come in, are going to this decoy first. I do love to pair in the right situation if the grass is low, I'm in a field. I mean, this would be a perfect example. Um, I do love to pair it with a breeding hen. I just kind of place this right underneath him like he's about to climb up on top of her. And I'm telling you, when those gobblers realize that there's a hen underneath him, you can almost tell when they realize she's there and uh, their heads pick up and it's like, oh, cap, and they'll just come barreling in. This combo right here has been probably responsible for 90% of my, my harvests. I will also uh, put this one out, kind of a, a lookout hen or a feeder hen, and I'm going to set this one away from them. I'm going to set them even closer to me, within five steps of me. So these guys will be out like eight or nine steps, and this one's going to be back closer. And really the reason for that is I don't want to put this one close or out in front of them because like I said, that gobbler is gonna go to this Jake first. I don't want him to have to walk by here and just see that it's missing legs or whatever. Sometimes they'll spook. I'm just trying to create an illusion that there's another turkey off to the side just kind of doing her own thing. I wanna make sure that this thing is not facing me. I don't want this turkey looking back at me because you know they're seeing a turkey just standing still like there's no movement, so they're gonna think, well, that turkey's looking at something, and they're gonna try to figure out what it's looking at. So I always try to face it as if that turkey's just watching that gobbler coming in. Same with the Jake decoy. I'm gonna try to turn him from which way I think he's coming in, because again, most of the times, that gobbler's coming to him, and he's gonna circle around and come on the backside, and it's gonna put him super close to you. Another thing I'm gonna keep in mind when I'm placing my decoys, is if that turkey is like straight out, you know, say 100 yards, 125 yards straight from where I'm sitting, old past the camera sitting, and I'm gonna sit back here at this pine tree, I don't really wanna set the decoys in between me and the turkey. I want them to set off to the side. So when that turkey comes in, he has to look one way or another that's gonna be past me. It's not gonna be in his line of sight to where I'm sitting especially when I'm hunting with my son or you know any new hunters because any little movement they see they're they're looking at these decoys they're going to see you move whether it's you know reaching out to take your safety off whatever they're going to see that so I want them to be off to the side 
this spot here where I'm giving this example is probably along the lines of a perfect scenario because I have this nice open spot right here and it's pretty thick with some pines all in through here. So you can sit back in that thick stuff and hide and these turkeys are out in the open. I've seen it many times where the, you don't have these in the open and a turkey maybe crest the hill and they see them and it kind of gives them that little shock value of like, whoa, what is that? And they won't come in after that. So I like to get them to look at these for as long as possible. Yes, a turkey can hang up once they see them. That's, you know, you're, you're defying nature in this situation in a sense because when you're calling to that gobbler, most of the times in, in the real woods, those hens go to those gobblers. So that's why I feel that a, a Jake decoy or you know a gobbler decoy is just lethal because if he sees that from way out, well, he's gonna think, well, he's got these hens, but this, this is my turf. Uh, I'm gonna come in here and show this guy a thing or two. And just so many times, so many times, these turkeys will come in and just beat the snot out of this Jake decoy. And I'm telling you, when that stuff happens within 10 yards of you, it's just, to me, it's just a whole nother level of excitement in turkey hunting. So that's my, my basic strategy on setting up decoys when I wanna get them within 10 yards. Uh, there's like last year we had one, we killed one at five steps away and uh, it's just, it's unbelievable to experience that. I mean, it's like at the right at the end of your gun barrel and I just, man, I just, that stuff just doesn't get old for me. I freaking love it. I love this stuff. Now again, I, you know, this is situational. If I'm hunting a turkey that, you know, I've called to before and he's seen my decoys before, I'm going to change it up a little bit. Uh, maybe maybe he didn't like the Jake. You know, later in the season, it gets it gets harder to use a breeder hen when the grass gets real high. Uh, it gets tougher to use it. They can't see it. So, um, you know, I'll switch things up. I might put these, these two a little bit closer together to make that gobbler think that, you know, he's trying to get lucky with this, this hen. So uh, it's all situational. But again, I just thought I would share with you my typical setup uh, that I do when we're shooting them under 10 yards. Just keep in mind, it is exciting. It's a lot more exciting, and your pattern is very tight at that that distance. So, you know, you gotta really make sure you uh, you know put that bead where it's supposed to be and squeeze off that trigger. Uh, we've had some some misses that are just like right there from from the bow to you know my son last year missed one just right in front of his face. It was so so close. In a field, you know, I might set them out a little bit further away. Uh, just depending on you know who's sitting behind the trigger and uh, you know what what my my goals are as far as filming goes. Uh, when I'm filming for you know uh, headhunters and Nate Hosey, you know it's a little bit different. We're going after you know quality footage rather than uh, you know good experience. So it all comes down to you know who I'm hunting with. There's also a debate you know to use decoys or not to use decoys, and you know a lot of times. Uh, it would have been better off not using a decoy because you know that gobbler comes from 500 yards away and like i said when he sees them decoys he hangs up whereas if you didn't have them out and you kept calling that turkey would have probably just kept looking for you and probably still been in your lap anyways so again it's all situational but um this you know when it comes to filming uh when it comes to you know a new hunter behind the trigger i want i want the turkeys to have something else to look at in case that just kind of gives you a little bit a leeway of having to move. I hope this helps, guys. Uh, if you try this, please let me know how you do. Uh, please, you know, write to me, email me, whatever. Um, you know, I try to respond, and I love your feedback, and I really do appreciate your guys' support. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> oh.